We really chose to focus on establishing Krypton to get a better sense of where they come from, what they were faced with as a culture and as a planet on the edge of self-destruction. I think it was important to us to really get at the heart of who the Kryptonians are. Krypton is a great sci-fi element, but it also serves as the framework so you really understand where Clark came from. One of the things that we really delve into is the fact that he's an alien. Well, because we were doing essentially a science fiction movie and we were highlighting Superman's alien nature, I, I wanted to spend a great deal of time on Krypton. And things like free will don't really exist on Krypton. John Byrne, when he reinvented um, Superman, I, I think in the mid-80s, had suggested that Kryptonians weren't born in the womb, that they were raised in these matrices. I'm not sure if he called them Genesis Chambers or not. That's something that we call them in our film. But we were at least following in his footsteps this idea that, that in a way Krypton was more like, you know, Brave New World. Your alphas and your betas and your gammas and things like that. For quite a number of years on Krypton, the way we have Krypton, there hasn't been anything such as natural birth. If you are a couple and you want a child, you are apply for a child and you get to choose whether they want that child to be a, a warrior or some form of a doctor or whatever it happens to be. Those children have been pre-grown. Then as the need comes, they are harvested and you receive your child. So it's that fundamental system that Jor-El rebels against. I even went so far as to write up sayings which Alex McDowell then translated into Kryptonian. All that stuff on the columns actually says stuff. Well, we, we had this sort of meta problem with Superman, which is that he is from a distant planet, but he has a giant S on his chest. So how do you resolve the fact that this S is, is Kryptonian? In a way, the entire idea of the language stemmed from that problem. And so what we started off with, without really the notion of developing a full language, was developing a series of glyphs. So if the S or the hope symbol, the hope glyph, is related to the House of L, and what is the glyph for Zod? And what is the glyph of Fiora? And what are the glyphs for the council? So we wanted to come up with a core number of those, the glyphs, and have sort of layered meaning behind them so that this one symbol could stand for a lot of different things. And these are sort of the, the ancient symbols. But then there became a need to be able to translate things more literally into English. So then we brought on a linguist and started developing a phonetic version of writing. From the backstory of this movie that I was told, the people are very selfish at this point in time, and so that was something that I focused on for the language. Also, there's a long history of the objects. The writing on objects shows that people pass them down through their generations. There's this recording of events that have happened with those objects, so they're um, very much into the history of their culture as well. So it was more about incorporating that old mythology of Krypton. Some of the sentences are about the gods of Krypton, so it was including that into the scenery and the idea that Kryptonians have this long tradition of writing, and so that should be reflected on the ships, the weapons, um, the chambers of council, all of those different things. So that was how it first kind of developed. There are some basic rules for the way language is developed, and, and one of those is what is the cultural emphasis and impetus for the language. So in English, it's about, it's all about me, right? So I want an apple is, is, is the way that the language is structured. What we said about Krypton was that they are object oriented. They are fetish, they fetishize the object. So in this case, it's apple want I. And so you put the object first. So that sort of set in motion a bunch of rules for the language. If they want to write a sentence, for example, like the light of Rao warms us, where you see the word Rao, you can either write it out phonetically or you can utilize the old ancient symbol and they kind of connect together in, in this very like intricate sort of filigree which exists on robots, sets, ships. These two women, uh, in probably within three to four weeks, had it licked. They just got on it and nothing stopped them and they came up with uh, an alphabet, a lexicon, a long list of, of words with their appropriate meanings and how the script should be used and all of the ins and outs of how things get tagged together, linked together, and uh, it was amazing.